What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here with your Packers Daily Chat on Cheesehead TV, wherever you are on the internet, because that's what we do. We're dedicated to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide, each day, every day. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Hopping in the chat already, talking about overtime and the games yesterday. I'll try to limit the overtime talk. I know it's been all the rage on Twitter and social media throughout the day on Monday. Obviously not very applicable to the Packers, but it is being talked about, so I'll touch on it a little bit, I'm sure. Um, somebody already bringing up uh, the refs sending teams to the Super Bowl. I am with very much with Chris Rhyme, who says, yes, they missed the P.I., but they also missed the obvious face mask on Goff, which would have set the Rams up for a touchdown rather than a field goal. A whole litany of missed calls in each and every game. It's the way it goes. Yes, it stings for Saints fans today, I have no doubt. Uh, but Packers fans who have watched the referees decide many games over the course of the last 10 years, I'm sure have little sympathy for any team being robbed of anything. Good evening. Hello. Ooh, Riley dropping a go Patriots. That just hurts to see, Riley. It's so hard to trade Jimmy Graham. Hello from Portugal. Hugo, hello. Um, it will be very difficult to trade Jimmy Graham, if only because of his contract. It's hard to see a team out there that would be willing to give up any kind of asset for the rights to Jimmy Graham after the year he is coming off of, after, you know, actually the last couple of years he's coming off of, but particularly last year, um, coupled with his salary, uh, which they would have to take on in any kind of trade, I can't imagine a team taking Jimmy Graham off the Packers' hands in 2019. Did I see Brandon Bostick's tweet after the Rams-Saints game? I did indeed. I thought it was hilarious. And people getting upset by it, y'all need to chill and get a life. That's all I can say. I thought it was very funny. If Brandon Bostick, who had uncountable death threats against him after his screw-up in the NFC Championship game back in 2014, if he can find humor in the situation, y'all need to chill. Anthony Barr, Golden Tate, and Earl Thomas... Would look solid in green and gold. Jonathan, I think that's a very fine who's who of names, but A, let's make sure all of them reach free agency first, and B, I'd be shocked if Earl Thomas is in anything other than a Cowboys uniform in 2019. Um, who is the top free agent prospect you would like to see the Packers go after? I will say this each and every day until we get to free agency. Let's let re-signings happen, and let's let uh, franchise tags and transition tags be applied by the ball clubs around the league before we start picking through wish lists for free agents. I know a lot of them are out there right now. Um, it's funny, ESPN just put out a big one, I think top 50 uh, free agents this morning. And going through that list, you can already tell, I'd say a good 65 to 70% of those names will be off the board when it comes to actual free agency. It's all very well and good to you know, dream about things here in mid-January, but um, you need to let the process play out. Free agency happens in mid-March. We'll see a lot of those names come off the board in the form of re-signings and tags uh, between now and then. We should trade our picks for a top five pick and draft Nick Bosa. Well, Jesse, first of all, I don't think um, even the two picks they have in the first round would get them into the top five. And number two, I don't think top five is getting you Bosa. It's got to be one or two. And I don't see the Packers having that kind of ammunition. And even if they did, I don't see Brian Gutekunst firing that gun. How can Dallas afford Thomas? They have no cap, Zachary. Come on. You've been watching the NFL long enough to know that that doesn't matter. If you want a player, you can go get him. Uh, the cap can be manipulated in any number of ways. Um... Nags, did you see that missed call? It was hard to miss, Travis. Other than if you're the ref right there in front that missed it. But yes, I missed. I saw it. A Sam Shields Super Bowl win would be nice, along with the tears of Pats fans. I think that is a sentiment every Packers fan can get behind. No doubt. Uh, do you think Morgan Burnett gets released? There would be interest from the front office. Daniel, that's a really good question. I did see the quotes from Morgan Burnett saying that he is... Uh, hoping to be released by the Steelers. Um, I can see both sides of it in regards to a reunion in Green Bay. On the one hand, I think he would, the moment he walked in the door, he'd probably be the best safety on, on the roster. That said, you would hope, you would think, the idea would be to improve and 
you know, grow going forward rather than uh, reaching back to a guy who has only gotten older and who was never much of a playmaker when he was in Green Bay and would have to learn an entirely new defense. Remember, um, he had played in Dom Capers' scheme his entire life in Green Bay, went to um, you know, the Steelers where they incorporated a lot of what still what Dick LeBeau had kind of cemented there in Pittsburgh, even though they had gone over to Tomlin's way, uh, have gone over to Tomlin's way a lot in recent years. Uh, what Pettin asks guys to do, you know, similar in some aspects, uh, still, you know, in three, four, based in three, four concepts, but uh, still a new system he would need to learn. Uh, and again, I think the Packers have an abundance of guys who play well near the line of scrimmage, which is where Morgan Burnett excels. Uh, they still need a free-ranging center fielder, um, as well as, I think, uh, Tremont Williams played in spot duty last year. I think they need to improve in that area, and I don't see how Morgan Burnett helps in that regard. That's just my opinion. If Kendricks comes cheap, do you see us bringing him back? It's a possibility. Any word on a special teams coordinator yet? No, not yet. I know they let Rizzi go. Sure sounds like they uh, were in talks with him for a while, but couldn't really strike a deal. I suspect, I don't have any inside information here, but I suspect... Um, that was much more to do with uh, him wanting to stay in Miami than anything else. Doesn't sound like he's taken any other offers and or interviews yet. You would think a guy with that kind of pedigree um, would be a hot commodity. And yet we have yet to hear of any interest from any other teams. He did interview for the head job in Miami. Maybe he stays on board there. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But as far as the Packers and where they turn now, as Tom Silverstein reported, you have to think they'll cast about for some special teams assistance and or maybe look at the college ranks. But no names as of yet have been attached to the Green Bay job. What's all the hype about Tony Romo for Devin in all caps? Um, I love it, man. He's different. And I love the idea that there's this ex-quarterback who looks at formations and calls out plays before they happen. He gets genuinely excited about the game of football. And most importantly, he's himself. He's not an imitation of an imitation of John Madden, which is what most of these guys do. They get to the booth, they get some producer in their ear, and they're like told to hammer these narratives and hammer these talking points and, you know, try and be a, a robot about this, that, or the other thing. And look, he's not like that at all. He's genuinely excited about the game. He knows the game better than anybody. And I just love his enthusiasm. I love the uh, passion he brings uh, while he's calling the game of football. And he's, he, he calls everything out before it happens. I love it. It's great. I don't know. I get why people don't like it, but I love it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Trade both firsts to the Cardinals and grab Bosa. That's going to take a lot more than both firsts. I'll tell you that. I think the overtime system is a little overblown. Defense is part of the game. Julian, you know I agree if you follow me on Twitter. I, I understand people's calls for changing the rules. It just feels like they're changing the rules each and every offseason while reacting to whatever the latest, you know, moment is. Uh, you know, but if you look back since the change in overtime rules, winning the coin toss has not necessarily meant you win the football game, even though everyone, the talking point from that side is, oh, you, you know, the... You, it's decided on a coin toss. Really? The Saints overtime game wasn't. And another thing, you don't want it to be decided by a coin toss. Don't let it get to overtime. It's not difficult. Play some defense. You know, the Chiefs had the Patriots in third and ten three times in that overtime drive. Couldn't seal the deal. Defense is part of the game. Sorry. Will you go off on your Reddit thread in the next Transplants episode? Alex, I will not. Uh, maybe Corey Banky will, but uh, I've said all I really need to say about it. People saying that overtime rules are unfair bring up an asinine take. It's a team game, and if the defense can't hold up, so be it. Sebastian, I wouldn't say it's asinine. I just, you know, I just don't understand the push for sudden things suddenly have to be fair and equitable because it's overtime. We don't apply these standards for the first 60 minutes, but all of a sudden it's important that everybody gets a fair shake. That's ridiculous to me, but... That's just my side of the fence here. Will you ask LaFleur to give Cheesehead TV credentials? You guys deserve it more than these other losers. So, so that is very nice of you to say. Uh, you know, Matt LaFleur does not uh, control the credentialing system in Green Bay. 
but I will definitely lobby on part of the Cheesehead TV. Not that it will do any good. Um, when I was watching the Patriots' offensive and defensive lines, they were pushing people around. Ismail, I couldn't agree more. I think the game was one up front on both sides of the ball. Um, that, coupled with, I think, Belichick caught Andy Reid by surprise with how much press he played right off the bat. Now, obviously, they adjusted as the game went on, and they scored a bunch of points. But to blank the Chiefs, the Chiefs' offense, which was completely walking up and down the field on everybody all season long, uh, to come up and put up a goose egg in the first half, that just speaks to the intelligence of Bill Belichick and his complete dominance of modern football. I think yesterday you saw one of the best being one of the best. Um, you can't tip your hat enough at Bill Belichick for the job he does year in and year out. I mean, to be in the Super Bowl again, being in another championship game for the eighth year in a row, speaks volumes. I and mean, the guy is the man. But yes, sorry, to get back to your original point, the both lines controlled that game. Um, and it's funny to see how much they kind of came alive, so to speak, and really caused Mahomes problems. I mean, I think there were three sacks in particular where uh, the young quarterback ran into, uh, basically ran into a sack where he didn't need to. And a large part of that was what was happening in front of him up front uh, from a defensive front that a lot of people weren't giving much of a chance to cause Mahomes problems. And yet they did just that throughout that game. Will you be at the Combine? Yes, Juan, I will be at the Combine. After looking at tape, I like Hawkerson more than Fant. Uh, Sosa, I really like uh, both guys. I can, I can totally understand um, you know, getting behind either one of them, but I think I'm with you. I like uh, the blocking ability that Hawkerson brings. He's a bit of a dog, and he's not afraid to uh, absolutely bury guys. Is this the offseason that Gutekunst actually gets a major deal done? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I would caution that getting a major deal done doesn't necessarily mean you've uh, won the deal or hit a home run or whatever analogy you want to use. I mean, everybody was celebrating signing Jimmy Graham for three years, and now all of a sudden everybody wants him traded or cut. You know? I mean, and yes, could he have made the trade, maybe made a harder push for to seal the deal on Khalil Mack. I know that's what Packer fans always like to go to. Um, I tend to think he did what he could. Could he have made a stronger push? Maybe Reggie McKenzie would have taken his deal. Only he, Reggie McKenzie, maybe John Gruden know for sure. Um, yeah, I would have liked to have seen that happen, but clearly, as uh, if you follow all the reporting, uh, sure sounds like he did everything he could on his end. Now we'll see. A lot of offseason left. Who wins the Super Bowl? Vincent, come back in two weeks. You'll get a Super Bowl preview right here at Cheesehead TV. Let's head over to the old tweet machine, see what's going on here. Uh, first tweet out of the gate says, Do you see the Packers packaging one of their fourth rounders and the number 30 pick to trade up a few spots if they see that one of their guys is still on the board? Well, I mean, do I see it? It depends on the guy, depends on the position, depends on a whole host of factors. Now, is it a possibility? Absolutely. Um, but that doesn't necessarily make it so. In fact, I think there's probably a better chance that that number 30 pick becomes um, a bit of bait for teams that are looking to trade back into the first round for a quarterback. Because a lot of times those low first round picks become um, enticing for teams that want to get that fifth year option on a young quarterback. Um, not saying that's what will happen, but I think that's, that's much more likely than trading up uh, out of that spot. Why weren't Rodgers McCarthy ever afforded the same leeway that Breeze Payton are? Whew. A lot to unpack there, but I think the simplest thing is the relationship between Breeze and Payton as opposed to McCarthy and Rodgers. You've never had the tension between quarterback and head coach in New Orleans that you saw develop over the last few years in Green Bay. That's as simple an answer as you can get there. Uh, well, we tested on, test, touched on this already. With Morgan Burnett requesting his release from the Pittsburgh Steelers, do the Packers try and bring him back if he is released? I doubt it, but you never know is the simplest answer there. Jesse, number one thing the Packers need to avoid in this year's free agency is signing another aging tight end. You can't make the mistake three years in a row, and this year's NFL draft class is very rich in top-end talent at the position. I could not agree more. 
been begging them to draft one for years. Really hope this is the year they pull the trigger. Wondering if you can provide any insight into as to why the Packers weren't picked to play the Rams in London this year, and you think the Packers will ever play there. Roberto, I have no insight as to what the Packers are thinking, or I'm sorry, what the league is thinking there, other than I have to imagine that they like L.A. Stadium being filled, and you saw last year when uh, the Rams were playing in uh, – playing the Packers in L.A., how it filled up with Packers fans. And that's the major issue that I think a lot of teams have with the idea of letting the Packers game on their schedule be played in London. Because Mark Murphy has said, unequivocally, the Packers will not play in London if it's a home game. They won't give up a home game. It would be dam too damaging, not only to the Packers, but to the local Green Bay economy. Um, he will never, ever, ever, ever give up a home game. Now, technically, the league could compel the Packers to play a home game in London, but they would never do that. Um, they just, uh, it, it's too specialized a case. Um, and like I said, the, the only way they're going to play in London is if it is on the road and no team wants to give up a road game uh, because Packers fans travel so well. But now to your last part, do I think the Pack will ever play in London? Yes. As of next year, they will be the only team in the league to have never played in London. The Panthers are heading over. All the other teams will have played in London, and the Packers will be the lone outlier. I would look for that to get rectified within the next two or three years. Um, I know for the European fans, it sucks. They're waiting for it. It's undoubtedly going to happen. It's just not going to happen in 2019. Let's head back over to the live chat, see what's going on. Woo, people talking to Anthony Barr. No way Anthony Barr ends, ends up in Green Bay. Then again, they did get peppers. Anthony Barr is no peppers. I agree with that. Anthony Barr, to my mind, is a fading talent, whereas peppers, uh, he had a little bit left in the tank. Still does, apparently. Um, but that said, you know, at the end of Pepper's tenure in Chicago, there was a lot of rumblings about him being over the hill and done. Then he helped the Packers get within a whisker of the Super Bowl. So... Uh, but do I see Anthony Barr in that same light? I don't. And I think it would be awfully hard to sell Anthony Barr in the Packers locker room after what happened with Aaron Rodgers. But you never know. It is a professional league. They are professionals. It's always possible. Young McVay versus Legend Hoodie. Intriguing, right? Stefano, I couldn't agree more. I think that's one of the angles that's going to make this Super Bowl so exciting. Um, as I was just talking about before, Belichick has proven again and again and again he is the greatest modern coach. Uh, there's no, I don't think in my mind that there's any question about it. I am excited to see how he, come, how he schemes up his defense against McVay's offense. And overall, how McVay goes about uh, playing uh, Tom Brady, the Patriots, Bill Belichick. It's interesting, if you go back and you watch that game yesterday, everything that's being talked about in light of the officiating, kind of something that's getting swept under the rug and or not really highlighted, and not, not that I'm surprised about it, but how conservative Sean McVay was throughout that game, whether it was you know, running on third and long deep in his own end, whether it's opting for the field goal instead of going for the touchdown deep in the uh, Saints territory. Uh, any number of calls from McVay could have turned that game either in his favor or you know, vastly affected it detrimentally <laughs> for his own team. But he took the conservative, conservative route again and again and again. And that's not a judgment. I was just a little surprised, uh, seeing as uh, is a guy who's been pretty aggressive throughout the season. Uh, now, that said, he did green light the fake uh, punt that really kind of jump-started them and helped them get back into the game. So uh, that's the one thing that I'm very interested to see is how and when he chooses to be aggressive and or conservative against Bill Belichick and the Patriots. D. Ford isn't smart enough to line up onside on the biggest play of the game. If we go after him, we are nuts. I think that's silly. To negate a guy and completely take him off your board because of one mistake, that's not smart, that's not smart personnel usage. What do you think about the dominant offensive guard in the first round? Uh, Cameron, if there's somebody there, I don't see a Quentin Nelson, but um, you know, 12 feels awfully rich for a guard, maybe at 30. Um, but I don't know. I haven't done enough work on the offensive line or really any of the position groups yet to give a definitive answer on that. But, I mean, I'm not diametrically opposed to it. 
Who do you see signing Kareem Hunt? Juan, not the Green Bay Packers. That's all I can give you on that. Uh... Uh, Nagel, you guaranteed Melissa McCarthy would have a job in 2019. I think you believe Mike McCarthy. Your boy is sitting the next year out. Astute prognosis. Well, Dwayne, I didn't know that he was going to narrow his search to one team. Uh, He turned down the Cardinals, and he decided not to interview for the Cleveland job. You going to include that in your little uh, pithy message here or no? No? Oh, okay. You just want to be uh, trolling on the internet. Got it. Aaron, do you think the Packers could be a top 10 defense next season, next year when healthy? Oh, well, there's that caveat. Healthy. Health is a big issue. Um, Even if they were completely healthy this year, I don't know if they're a top 10 defense. I tend to doubt it. Uh, Can they? Sure. But let's see what pieces they add along the way before we start prognosticating about their uh, rankings in 2019. Um, how do you think O-line play changes with camp and leaving and potentially a lot of new blood coming in? Yeah, that's a good question. What's interesting is listening to LaFleur talk about predicating his offense off of his zone running scheme. That's very much what the Packers have been based in under Mike McCarthy these last 10 years plus. Um, yeah, that said, the style I would think would be a little bit different. Yeah, I would think they would probably lean a little bit more towards what Alex Gibbs did with um, Kyle Shanahan's dad, Mike Shanahan's group, uh, Denver and throughout, what Kyle Shanahan preached while he was in Washington and Atlanta, and undoubtedly now in San Francisco. Um, they're getting the ex-assistant offensive line coach from San Francisco who has worked under Shanahan for a year. So I think you'll see a few more cut blocks backside, a little more aggressiveness in that regard. But for the most part, it's going to be a continuation of what they've been doing in that zone scheme. But we'll see. You've spoken to both. Who do you think was more difficult with the other, Rodgers or McCarthy? Uh, that's a, a, impossible to say without being privy to what went on behind the scenes. I know, without question, publicly, McCarthy is the one who always took the high road, and Rodgers was the one who always took the shots, passive-aggressive though they may have been. Um, that said, we have no idea what went, be- went on behind the scenes. I have been told many stories over the course of the last two years or so Um, from the Rodgers side of things, and I've been told things on the McCarthy side of things. You know, I I do not doubt for a second that the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Um, I do know that uh, Mike, for all his faults, uh, never once rose to the bait that his quarterback threw out there quite a few times. And that's uh, really all you can say about that. I know the Packers need a center fielder, but I otherwise really, really like their DB group. Tons of upside. Aaron, I totally agree. Uh, I think they, without question, uh, have a good nucleus to work with. Um, But as you say, they do need a center fielder, no doubt about it. Hopefully Rodgers doesn't butt heads with the new head coach when it comes to running the ball. I think that's a big key to 2019 and going forward. Look, you don't have to look much further than the reclamation projects of John Elway, and Brett Favre, to know what a new head coach and a new kind of system and or focus can do for an aging quarterback, the back nine of his career, as Rodgers has called it. Um, I think a lot of the kind of Rodgers was out of control, changing plays, etc., a lot of that has been overblown. That said, um, I do think he needs to buy in, and I do think he needs to change slash adjust how he plays, especially when it comes to hitting checkdowns and playing from the pocket. A lot of that has been talked about. A lot of that will undoubtedly be written about and talked about ad nauseum throughout the offseason. Rodgers knows this. He's undoubtedly going to come up against it with the coaching staff. And whether he decides to buy in or not, I think will go a long way to determining not specifically their success, but how they play as an offensive unit in 2019. Um, You know, just because... LaFleur may come in there with some ideas and Rodgers may counter them. Doesn't mean it's, you know, destined to be doomed. Um, But they do have to work together. They do have to complement each other. There's no question about that. (laughs) Green Bay needs to get a tackling coach. Well, they do need to tackle better. There's no doubt about it. But as I've said a hundred times, if I've said it uh, once, it's 
they need to draft better tacklers and or get them in free agency. Once you get to the NFL, you're not magically becoming a better tackler. If you haven't learned to tackle by the time you get to the league, I tell you what, having fewer practices and fewer practice time is not going to suddenly make you a better tackler. That's just not going to happen. You have to draft good tacklers. Stop focusing on athletes. Start focusing on tacklers. Things will change. Just my two cents. Rodgers definitely has to stop snapping the ball with two seconds on the play clock every play. Timmy, I agree. I do think you will see that change. I think you will see the whole operation on the offensive side of the ball. Um, at least initially, there'll be, I would tend to think, there'll be a definite shift in focus there. Uh, they have to get tempo. They have to get going. That's something you saw was sorely lacking in 2018, no doubt. Do I think Rodgers will have a monster comeback season? I don't know about monster, but I think he'll, he'll look decidedly better in 2019. But most of that, the bedrock of it, will be the running game. Martinez tackles and nothing else. Well, I think that's a little harsh. I think he does a lot more. He gets guys, uh, he's the quarterback of the defense. He gets guys lined up, uh, does a lot of little things that uh, maybe don't go appreciated. Definitely don't go appreciated, apparently, to that comment. Um, he definitely tackles. We all see that. He does have to hold on to the ball when given the opportunity. There's no question about it. Turnover plays are the one big kind of glaring weakness. Um, But I would say, um, when you say he does nothing else, when he's given the opportunity to rush the quarterback, he delivers. Look, go back and look at uh, his sacks this year. They're few and far between because it's you know he his number barely ever gets called. But when it does, he makes the most of it. He gets to the QB. Um, I would be, I would just. Temper your dismissiveness a little bit. What players are you most excited to see next season under the new head coach? Seth, other than Aaron Rodgers? Um, It's a good question. I would say the young wide receivers um, and probably Aaron Jones. Something in that mix. Uh, But the young wide receivers, for the most part, I'm excited to see uh, a lot less isolation route stuff and a lot more kind of bunch sets rub routes, pick routes, et cetera, what these guys can do with the ball in their hands after the catch. I think they'll be given more of those opportunities. Uh, You saw it start to kind of come to fruition at the end of the year, both MVS and EQ, um, and, hell, um, Kumaro as well. Those guys made some plays with the the ball in their hands after, after the catch. I'm all for more of that. Edgar Bennett, wide receiver coach. Uh, I don't, it doesn't sound like it, but uh, I'll tell you what. I know there's a report out there this past weekend about Luke Getze possibly coming back. Um, reportedly, both on the record, and I know people off the record have said this, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers loves Getze, loves it. Now, I'm not saying that you know, that's the reason that they're going that route, but I don't think it can hurt. Um, all of that said, I only bring it up because Edgar Bennett, is probably the best wide receivers coach they've had since uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Williams back in the day. Uh, Edgar Bennett's crew, when he was in charge of that position, was outstanding in doing the little things. And that's not to take away from Getze. I thought Getze was a fine coach. Uh, but Bennett was the absolute man. Is Jamal Moore a bust? No. Way too early to call anybody a bust after their first year. Way too early. Do I think Jackson will move to safety? Nate, I doubt it. Um, it's always a possibility. We'll see. Uh, but especially since they're keeping the same staff and the same system, not the same staff, sorry, same coordinator and the same defensive system, I think they'll continue along the path of leaving him at corner and letting him mature and hope, you know, not hope, but try and bring him along and develop him, uh, making that second year jump from year one to year two. Should the Packers resign Brashad Breland? Alex, I think so. I think you saw a lot of uh, promise there. Give him another year in the system. Uh, you saw how, um, you know, he, he was a bit of a ball hawk, made some plays, uh, had the big pick six against Atlanta. Um, and that's on, you know, basically half a year. Uh, didn't have camp, didn't have any time to kind of really get, a, you know, the reps in the system in the summer. Give him a full off season. I think he can improve and get even better. Um, now, obviously, the money has to work. Uh, I definitely don't break the bank for the guy, but if it's a fit, both cap-wise, and he wants to come back? Yeah, I'd definitely bring him back. 
Everyone's saying players are a bust or laughable. Remember how much Devante got hate Devante got? Look at him now. Sosa, I agree to an extent, but remember, Devante actually looked promising in spurts his rookie year. Um, Jamal Moore has looked anything but. Now, that said, I agree with your overall point. It's way too early to label anybody a bust, but there were definitely flashes. I mean, you don't have to look much further than that Patriots game his rookie year. I mean, he had games and moments that made you think, okay, they got something here. But Jamal Moore, he just had a bad camp, never could get on the, get on the uh, field during the season because they didn't trust him. Uh, we'll see if uh, he makes a jump from year one to year two. Any fears Gutekind stays aggressive and overpays for free agents the way he did with Jimmy Graham? Frank, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's funny watching <laughs> Packers fans change their tune on free agency. I'm not saying all Packers fans, but I'm saying in this instance to this comment. You know, we've just spent a decade of people clamoring for more free agent sign signings, and then they have one which, admittedly, early on, doesn't look like it's working that well, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, gosh, maybe they're overspending. Well, yeah, that's free agency. You know, most deals in free agency, especially contracts that are signed early on in free agency, are not bad deals, but they are overpaying. For uh, the guys reaching free agency are reaching free agency because their teams don't want to pay them. And those teams know those players better than anybody else. So, you know, is there a fear he might overpay? Sure, but that's free agency. Um, I think the one thing working against that, funnily enough, in the Packers' favor, is that a lot of teams are going to have a lot more cap space. So they're going to drive up deals and probably take guys away and overpay for some of the guys that you know, the Packers may be interested in. But that said, I don't think he's going to um, go hog wild ever. <laughs> Do I have faith in Kevin King staying healthy and staying on the field in 2019? All I can have is faith. <laughs> I mean, guys have been injured early on in their careers before and gone on and had fine careers. Um, can, one can only hope. I mean, there's nothing really connecting the injuries from year one and year two. Uh, the thing that is unfortunate is ending on injured reserve both years, but uh, hopefully, yes, he can stay on the field. They definitely need him because they are a much better defense when he's on the field. No question about that. Mm. If it's like anything. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. Uh, will the bargains in free agency be the last ones left? Hmm, not always, sometimes. Um, I tell you what, Mercedes Lewis was a bargain, and then the Packers didn't know how to use him, or at least Mike McCarthy didn't. Uh, and that's another warning for you all, pining for free agents. It's got to be a fit. It's got to be in concert. It sure felt like um, Gutekunst and the personnel group thought, look, Mercedes Lewis is still sitting out there. We can sign him for a song. Let's do it. And they did it, and then the team never used him properly. So, you know, that's one thing that, Having Gutekunst and a young head coach be in constant communication and kind of grow a system and or personnel group together, maybe that helps in that regard. Because it sure seemed like signing both of those tight ends, and Graham and, uh, and Lewis, sure didn't look like McCarthy knew how to use either one properly. All right, everybody, I'm going to have to jump. Thank you so much for all the questions. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to yours, but uh, make sure you're checking all of our stuff at Packers News. Packers news, oh my God, at Cheesehead TV, um, including my fix for NFL Overtime. If you missed it, I have the most simple, elegant way to fix what is clearly a problem, the NFL Overtime. Make sure you check that out at CheeseheadTV.com. Um, if you're on YouTube, please, please, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you're on Facebook, share us, let, us your, let your friends know that we're here talking about the Packers, and uh, check our stuff out at CheeseheadTV.com. Thanks a lot, everyone. Talk to you soon.